following on from the last session, now you've got used to actually handling the paint, the next step will be looking at colour. And if you can see from the six squares in front of me, you've got your two reds, your two yellows and your two blues as the primary colours. So what we're going to look at today is the interaction between colour. Each of the colours will have a different third colour when you mix one of the other colours with it. It sounds very complicated, it's actually not. Say we've got our reds. If you put your other red over the red, you'll see already there is an interplay and there's a third colour added. If you then take that colour, put it over, you see how the yellow deepens already. So you don't shift the colour underneath with the pinky red. It will give you a different colour. And this will help you, if you use all six, it will give you a full spectrum. And try it on all of them. Um, I think experimenting with colour is a really useful thing to do. I think people don't tend to keep mixing and their palette is very limited. Uh, but if you want to work, say, outside in landscape, as some of you have indicated to me, that's what you would uh, aim for, then you will need to get used to mixing your colours. With the pinky red, that you've got a better chance of making a purple than you have by using the orangey red. So now let's look at using the blue. So I'm going to use the Carillion blue, which is the lighter turquoisey blue, this one. So if you want a deeper blue or a slightly change of tone, you can use one of the others. Um, okay, now this is where it becomes, you can see it a bit more clearly, where your secondary colour, when you add another colour on top of another one, you get a secondary colour. So with the yellow and the blue, you get a green. And then depending which yellow and which blue you use, it will give you a different kind of green. Right, let's try our yellows. So again, you're adding yellow onto blue. And it will give you a green. So it's a really, really good idea to play around with how colour works. And if we put our yellow, deep yellow on top of the orange, can you see how you get a much deeper tone of orange there? I think when you're starting, you don't need to be any more complicated than that. And just to experiment and just to try colour out. And hopefully from this you start to see where, how to overlap, how to um, explore with your colour ranges. If you get used to using your two yellows, your two reds and your two blues and have a look and see what spectrum of colour you can get from that range. Okay, and you can see how the white of the paper uh, gives you the transparency of watercolour and you can see how as you add layers it goes denser. So your dark colours come from that overlap or that interplay. Now we've been putting uh, 
the colour just down onto the page and this was for me to show you the interplay. You can also then obviously mix it in the palette. Uh, let me show you. Um, hopefully you can see this. So if I mix the yellow with the blue, I get a green. It's a good idea to aim for both overlapping wet paint on dry paint, but it is also useful to get used to mixing on the palette. Have an experiment. So that gives you your primary colours, and when you mix your primary colours together, you end up with your secondary colours, which is your purples, your oranges and your greens. Blue and yellow make green. Red and blue either make a brown as here or a more purple colour as here, just by using the two different reds. And yellow and red make your orange. There were three other colours, which are your earth colours. And for those of you that want to work outside, work in landscape, I'm going to show you the three earth colours which are really, really useful. So you've got your yellow ochre, and can you see how it's a much browner, much more natural tone? Then you've got your burnt sienna, which is your brown. And then you've got your burnt umber, which is a really, really dark brown. Um, these are absolutely invaluable if you're working in landscape. Your primary colours and your secondary colours will give you quite a vibrant, quite a light colour. But if you want more naturalistic colours, what I suggest you do is to get used to mixing those into your primary colours. And if you get used to doing this, it will give you the full spectrum of what you need when you start to work outside.